Um, and so uh, our study is taken from the book of Daniel. Um, and uh, we'll be looking at a few scriptures and see what we can learn from those. Um, and so uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll just pause for a moment and uh, we'll just pray a little bit and we'll go into it and study. Dear Lord, we, um, we are so grateful to be connected in this way and we commit our studies into your hand. Pray that your blessings will rest upon all of us for Christ's sake. Amen. Okay, um, our, our study at this moment uh, is uh, taken from the book of Daniel. And we'll be basically looking at, uh, we'll be looking at uh, two scriptures. There will be others, but those are the two main ones. So uh, the first one, the first one is in Daniel chapter 2, verses uh, 28. Daniel chapter 2, verse 28. Okay, and uh, in Daniel chapter 2, we know the story. King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, he forgets the dream, and then he asks all his, all his advisors and wise men and uh, enchanters and uh, you know, and sorcerers and uh, to tell the dream and its meaning, and they couldn't. So, the king ordered that all the wise men from his entire kingdom should be killed. Now, um, no, no king or political leader in his right mind does that. But uh, King Nebuchadnezzar probably had a temper, I don't know. And uh, he ordered all to be executed from the leading man in his kingdom to the student on college all should be wiped away. Um, but, and then, you know, Daniel comes across, um, hears about this and asks the captain in charge of that, of the execution, uh, Captain Ariok, and begins to ask why the king has made such a uh, harsh uh, uh, a law. And he was told about king's dilemma king's situation and king's problem. He asks for time that um, he will try and um, solve the problem. He asks for time and time was granted. And he goes home and tells his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, Abanico, and they begin to pray. Early in the morning, early in the morning, Daniel rises up because the Lord has given the same dream that he had given to King Nebuchadnezzar, he gives to Daniel. And so Daniel prays and glorifies God. He worships God and his friends join him. And um, early in the morning, he finds um, uh, Captain Ariok and they rush across to the palace. And when they went there, Captain Ariok says um, to the king and say, King, um, I have found a man. And uh, that was strange, you know. <laughs> he wanted to make sure that King knows that he was responsible for finding a man who will solve King's issues. And uh, sometimes uh, in our humanness, you know, such things do happen, you know. Um, and so King turns around and asks, Daniel, you know, if he was able to tell the dream and if he was able to interpret the dream. And the response uh, uh, Daniel gives is strange. The first word that comes out from his mouth is no. No wise man is able to tell you what you have asked. Uh, no uh, 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 sorcerer, no consultant, no advisor is able to tell you what you have asked. In fact, what you have asked is difficult. Then he proceeds in verse 28 and says, but there is a God. But there is a God who lives in heaven, 
who reveals mysteries. There is a God who reveals mysteries. Now, that is our first text. I'll, I'll, I'll you know, uh, read the text one more time. There is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. Now, if you remember the story in Daniel chapter 1 and chapter 2, you know, unlike today, the political leaders in our nations today, King Nebuchadnezzar and his entire kingdom, they actually had many gods. Babylon had many, many gods. In Daniel chapter 1, Nebuchadnezzar goes into Jerusalem and empties the treasures from the temple in Jerusalem. And the Bible says that he brings them over, Daniel chapter 1 verse 3, he brings them over into Babylon and he takes them straight into the sanctuary of his gods, the Babylonian gods, and he puts them there. Uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abanico. They are Hebrew boys. He takes them to Babylon and he gives them new names. The names he gives are the names of Babylonian gods, right? So Babylon had many, many gods. Even the wish, the, 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 the wise men, the astrologers, and the advisors that the king uh, assembled during, his, during this time, all of them had gods too. And so Babylon had many gods. But among many gods, when this issue was presented to the, to the king, when the king had issues, none of the gods that Babylon had could resolve the issue. And so Daniel comes into the scene and realizes that at that time of crisis, there were many gods on display and no one could resolve the issue. And Daniel introduces another God and he says, but there is a God among many gods. There is a God who lives in heaven, who reveals mysteries. So that's what we find. Among many gods, there is one God. Now, rest of the gods Babylon had, they had eyes, but they could not see. They had ears, but they cannot hear. They had mouths, but they could not talk. They had ends, but they never touched or blessed or healed or saved anyone. Among many that appear to be gods, there was one true living God. And so Daniel introduces that God to the king of Babylon. And among other advisors and wise men, he introduces that God. That is our first text. And um, after Daniel told a dream and the interpretation, we go to Daniel chapter 2, verse 47. And there, Nebuchadnezzar says to, the, to Daniel, and this is what he says, surely your God, now take note of that, surely your God, he had his own God. <laughs> All of his advisors had their own gods. Babylon had their own gods. And so he says, surely your God is the God of gods. And he is the Lord of kings. And he is the revealer of mysteries. God, whom you and I have testified about and testimonies we have shared, that is this God. In this world today, many people turn to so many things, thinking that that will solve their issues and attend to their problems and concerns and burdens. But the God that Daniel introduced to Babylon, he still lives today. And 
That happens to be your God and that happens to be my God today. That is the first text and the first point. The second um, uh, 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 text is found in Daniel chapter 5, verses 11. Daniel chapter 5, verses 11. Now, in this story, this time it is no, not um, King Nebuchadnezzar anymore, but King Nebuchadnezzar's son, King Belshazzar. He had a crisis, he had a problem. We just briefly mentioned about um, uh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar going to Jerusalem and taking all the treasures and taking them over to Babylon and putting them in the temple of his gods. Now, after Nebuchadnezzar died, King Belshazzar came on. That was his son. And then he had a banquet, and in that party, he invited all his guests and officials, and then takes all the utensils from the sanctuary in Jerusalem, and then they used them during this banquet. And we know the story. A hand came on the wall and begin to write. And the scripture says that King Belshazzar, he was terrified. And he actually turned pale. He looked as if he was a dead man. And immediately he calls, again, he assembles all his advisors, his counselors, and says, please read that writing for me. And whoever reads it, I will reward them. That's what he said. But the scripture also says that none, none of the wise men, none of the magicians, none of the advices was able to do what the king requested. Now, that made him literally sick. <laughs> During the time, the scripture says that the queen mother, the king's mother, walks into the chamber and then sees his son like kind of looks pale. And then when that happened, you know, he say, she says these words in Daniel chapter 5, verses 11. And this is what, he, what she says. And says, there is a man in your kingdom. There is a man in your kingdom. No, you remember the text. Daniel says, among many gods, he says, there is a God in heaven. But in this passage, the queen mother says to her son, the king, and gathered in the chamber was all the advices. And the queen mother introduces another man in that uh, uh, chamber and says that there is another man in your kingdom who has the spirits of the holy gods. I'll read the text one more time. She says, there is a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy gods in him. That is the text. What do we find in this? This is what we find. Among many advices, among many counselors, among many sorcerers, among many wise men, the queen mother introduces another man and says that in your kingdom, there is an, another man. I see all the men gathered here. But there is another man who says Daniel and says to her son, call for Daniel, call for Daniel. Now, you know, just like the first text, this text seems to be saying that among many advisors and among many consultants and among many wise men, there is another man. Actually, the real man is not here. That's what she said. The real man is not here. Why? Would the queen mother say that about Daniel? Why was Daniel different? What set Daniel apart from all the other men? I'd like to just run through six 
things and then we'll be done. Six things. I'll go with them one by one really fast. The first one is this. Daniel chapter 5 verse 6 says that there is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of God. It is the spirit of God that made Daniel different from all the wise men in the entire kingdom of Babylon. And today, in your day and in my day, it is still the same spirit of the holy gods that sets you and me apart from any other man and any other woman and any other child. The spirit of God. That was the first thing. The second thing is this. In big issues and little problems that Daniel went through, he took every problem to prayer. Daniel was a praying man. Daniel prayed over little things. Daniel prayed over giant issues. Daniel prayed when it came to food, tests of food. And Daniel prayed when he was thrown into lion's den. Big issue, small issue, prayer was the natural thing that Daniel did. Just like a plant that naturally turns towards the sun. Daniel in his life, any problem that he encountered, he immediately turned toward God. He prayed. That is what we find in Daniel chapter 2. When king ordered that all wise men should die, he gathers his friends and he prays. Daniel chapter 6. When he realized that the law has been passed, saying that no man should worship another God or should worship another man, Daniel goes to his upstairs room and he begins to pray, giving thanks. Daniel chapter 9, Daniel prays. We see in big problems and small problems, he not only had the spirit of the holy gods, but he also, through that spirit, he communed with the holy gods. He prayed. That was the second thing that we find. Number three, Daniel chapter 6, verse 10 says this. Now, when Daniel heard about the degree, heard about the law, he went upstairs to his room, opened the window towards Jerusalem, and he got on his knees and he prayed three times a day. But that's not all. He prayed three times a day as he had done previously. So when he had no crisis, no issues, no problems, he prayed three times a day. When his life was threatened, he prayed three times a day. He prayed, he prays consistently. When he felt good, he prayed. When he felt bad, he prayed. When God answered his prayer, he prayed. When God did not answer his prayer, he prayed. Praying was his habit habit. It was his lifestyle. So three things we said already. Daniel was a real man because he had a spirit of God. Because he prayed over big and small things. He prayed consistently. Three. And number four. When Daniel had success, when God had blessed him, he always gave glory and thanks to God. Like the, you know, the, the, the testimonies we've just shared. It's amazing, you know. Every day if we look for Red Seas to part, that may never happen. If we look for 40 years to, of manners to fall, that may never happen. But we need to carefully consider every little thing that God does in our lives and in our homes and in our families, you know. So we realize in Daniel chapter 2, when he goes, when he prays to God concerning King's dream, and God has just granted him the vision, and 
when king asks him, are you able to tell me the dream and interpret it for me? His immediate response is no, no, no. I am not able to do it. No wise man is able to do it, but there is a God in heaven. You see, he was very intentional, deliberate. The way Captain Ario came out, he, wanted, he was seeking glory. You know, I found a man among the exiles of uh, 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 the Jews. But for Daniel, he made sure that he was deliberate. So when God, you know, blesses us, uh, 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 God does, when God comes through for us, what do we do? What do we do? We must do what Daniel did. He intentionally glorified God when God blessed him. That's the fourth thing. And the fifth, Daniel chapter 9 verse 2 says this, that Daniel understood from the prophecies of Jeremiah that the Jews were to be in captivity in Babylon for only 70 years. And by this time, the 70 years were over. Daniel came as a young man. Now he's an old man. 70 years have gone by. And so he knew from the scriptures, the Bible says, Jeremiah's prophecy that they were supposed to be there for only 70 years. And when 70 years were over, he confesses his own sins. He confesses the sins of his fathers. He confesses the sins of the entire nation. And he wrestles with God to fulfill his prophecies. And saying, 70 years are over, Lord. Please free us, liberate us, send us back home. And so he was praying. So he was studying the scriptures. Daniel chapter 1. When food from the king's table was given to him, he refuses to eat. What informed his faith? It was also the scriptures. So in other words, the fifth point is this. Daniel studied the scriptures so that he can apply them in his own life so that he could wrestle with it. He could confess his sins. He could pray and he could make changes in his lifestyle. Daniel studied the scriptures so that he could live by the principles found in the scriptures. That's the fifth one. Sixth one. Why is it that the queen mother in that chamber where all the wise men, advisors and consultants like gathered together, he says, no, I see all of these men, but still there is a man in your kingdom who is not here. And so um, the final point is this. Daniel, Daniel, he was committed, really, really committed to his God. His worship was not based on convenience, but it was solidly established and based on principle. He took his worship seriously to the next level. So much so that he was even prepared to risk it all. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, when students, when there is an exam on Sabbath, what do we do? You know, because my life is very important and my future depends on this exam, you know, do we sacrifice the Sabbath? and attend class or do exam, what do we do? You know, Daniel's life, we see, when it came to food, he was prepared to sacrifice his entire studies or even his life. He took the principles of God so seriously. You know, when his job was on the line, work is on the line, Daniel chapter 6, he was, he was, he was, he was one of the top three advisors in the kingdom of Darius. And then later he was king as like kind of saw him and he wanted to appoint him as his deputy. But when the test came, 30 days, 
worship no other god but Darius. You know, he was prepared to sacrifice his own work, sacrifice his own life, sacrifice his own privilege, sacrifice everything. He took the scriptures and the principles of the scriptures so seriously and so personally. He actually valued them much more than his own food, than his own studies, than his uh, own life, than his own work. And so he took it to a all new level. No wonder why, you know, even the queen mother could say about Daniel, saying that there is a man in your kingdom. So I think that's the end of our study. And uh, I'll just recap the two main points and then we'll finish. Number one, Daniel says about God, among many gods in Babylon, so many gods on the shelves, on market, on display in that palace. Among them, Daniel introduces and says that there is a God in heaven. Second, when there were many advisors gathered all around the king in Daniel chapter five, the queen mother walks into that room and says, no, I see everyone here, but there is another man in your kingdom, said that. And so we are finding six things which Daniel did, which helped him to recognize God and for him to say there is a God. And he kept that connection seriously. And as a result, Daniel became different in a difficult world, in a difficult, difficult kingdom. He went through so many risks, but he was protected by God and he was safe. God was with him because of the six things that he did. Number one, at the spirit of God. Number two, he prayed. Big things, small things, prayer. And number three, he prayed consistently. Number uh, four, he studied the scriptures so that he could apply in his life. And number five, when he succeeded and when God blessed him, he glorified God. And number uh, six, he was willing to sacrifice when God demanded it. And as a result, we see Daniel's story, Daniel's name being mentioned as the real man. I pray that in our own lives, in our own circle, in our own families, I pray that we will do what Daniel did so that our friends could say, there is a boy in this class. There's a girl in this class. There's a woman who lives in our neighborhood. There's a man who works among us. It is because we do what Daniel did. May God's blessings rest upon all of us as we struggle you know, in this time of our, uh, our life. That's uh, 